Hi everyone, my name is Madeline Lopez and I'm a graduate student at Humboldt State University. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my research regarding the timing of seed maturation as well as the thresholds for seed mortality to demonstrate an alternative regenerative mechanism permitting post-fire persistence for non serotonous conifers. The changing climate has exacerbated poor environmental conditions for many plant species. Continued warming and dry conditions facilitate fire and are projected to promote fire frequency, size, and severity. High severity fires, similar to the car fire of 2018, which you can see here, which I'm outlining with my mouse, um, may become more frequent in the future, forcing plants to either adapt or perish. Conifer species without fire adaptations are of large concern as these species require a moderate length of time to reach reproductive maturity. Additionally, as fire size increases, non serotonous tree species will be much less abundant on these burn sites due to seed dispersal limitations from the living edge of the burn site. These species will face local removal if they're unable to adequately restock the burn site. However, our research investigates an alternative regenerative mechanism for non serotonous species termed facultative serotony. Serotonous species are well known for their fire adapted cones that remain closed due to a hard resinous bond and only open in the presence of high temperatures associated with fire. Whereas non serotonous species have ovulate cones with scales that open each season prior to seed abscission. Such non serotonous species can exhibit facultative serotony on landscapes following fire if one, the seeds are permitted to mature prior to the timing of fire, and two, if the cone scales of the ovulate cone are adequately able to protect these viable seeds. So here I've actually included a um, snapshot or a little picture from Michaelette's et al. 2013 publication. And this is a longitudinal section of a white spruce really just to demonstrate how deeply tucked in those seeds are um, within the cone scales. And this actually offers a source of protection as fires coming through an area because the heat associated with the fire is transferred from the cone surface inward towards those seeds or cone access. Um, and evidence of this mechanism can actually be seen here in this picture that I included from Larson and Franklin's 2005 publication. And this is really cool because they snapped this picture um, following the Warner Creek burn in 1991 um, in a high severity patch. And this burn site is actually several hundred meters from the nearest living conspecific tree, meaning that this recruitment could not have come from the living edge along the burn perimeter, given those seed dispersal distance constraints for non serotonous species. So this is snapped of Douglas fir, or the picture is snapped of Douglas fir, which is a non serotonous species. Um, so you know, we're actually able to see facultative serotony at play here in this picture. And um, I don't know if I mentioned, but the fire that ran through here was a late autumn fire. And so, you know, the belief is that late season fires present the opportunity for facultative serotony as these seeds are able to mature while remaining protected by those intact cone scales. Um, and we're actually able to see a consistent pattern in the accumulation of heat over time with this figure that I made using the last 10 years of PRISM data. Um, the positive relationship between seed maturation and the increasing sum of heat has been documented, for example, Muner et al. in 2007. Thus, this is the metric that we'll use for tracking seed development in our study. Um, Julian dates are used to define the day of the year. So January 1st is the very first Julian date. And by defining the range of Julian dates for seed maturation, we'll have the ability to define the temporal window for facultative serotony. So our research objectives are to provide insights on post-fire recovery by one, defining the timing of seed maturation for four non-serotonous California conifers, 
to identifying the capacity of conifer seeds to withstand increasing levels of heat prior to mortality, and three, to then apply our findings to determine the temporal window permitting facultative serotony. So to address this, um, first we wanted to take a look at seed maturation. So we selected four non serotonous species and these species included ponderosa pine, Douglas fir, incense cedar, and lodgepole. Um, we selected these species due to their sheer abundance in the mid-latitudinal belt. Um, also, these species have yet to be studied for the timing of seed maturation. So we went out, collected closed conifer cones in Lassa National Forest near Bernie, California. These cones were collected every other week for the summers of 2018 and 2019 between the months of June and September. Once we collected the cones, they were taken back to the lab and 25 seeds were randomly selected and also extracted from five to 10 cones of each species and tested for viability for each collection date. And the way that we did that was we just used a 1% tetrazolium solution. Um, after they sat in the solution for 48 hours, we pulled them out, made a longitudinal slice so that we could examine the embryo. Um, and here you can see, I'm tracing it with my mouse, a picture that I included of a picture perfect viable seed. So that embryo stained red. Once we um, obtained those viability results, we then calculated the sum of heat by tracking and summing the daily heat above five degrees Celsius, starting on January 1st for each year that they were collected. Um, we use the daily heat average above five degrees Celsius as that's actually the minimum temperature required for metabolic activity to contribute to seed development in conifers. So here we can see um, a general trend for all the species pooled together in this figure that I made. Um, and we're able to see a significantly positive relationship between seed maturation and the accumulating heat sum with a p-value of 0 0.00125. Um, and this graph indicates to us over 50% viability with, of all seeds or like all, all of the seeds from all of the species with an accumulation of 1,358 degrees Celsius to 1,889 degrees Celsius. We were able to calculate relative viability just using the maximum viability that each species reached. And then we recorded that as 100%, just so we were able to study um, all of the species on the same scale. And the reason why I pulled all of these guys together so we could take a look at this figure was because we didn't actually have a species effect that was significant. And this is likely just due to having a small sample size. However, um, we do suspect that there are subtle differences among these species um, within our data set. So I wanted to include that here. Um, and we're able to see those subtle differences just with the onset of viability differing among these guys. So here I took a look at the timing of 10% relative viability, just because we're able to say that if there's, you know, at least 10% viable seeds that we do know that there's going to be some seeds that are able to contribute to regeneration if a fire does roll through an area during those times. So um, this ranged from mid-July to mid-August with ponderosa maturing the quickest and incense cedar um, maturing the latest. So next to push into seed mortality, um, we again studied the same species. We went out to the same site and we actually used our seed maturation results to kind of guide us in the timing of when we should collect those cones to study seed mortality. So based on the results from seed maturation, we suspected that a good time to go out and um, pool cones from the tree that will basically have the greatest viability across all of those species would be September 5th in 2020. So this was the third research summer that we went out. Um, on that date, we had an accumulation of 2,146 degrees Celsius for our heat sum. And that Julian date was 249. 
Once those cones were collected, we brought them back to the lab and we exposed them to seven, seven different treatments for heat exposure. So we had our first treatment, which was really just a control. This kind of took a look at um, room temperature on those seeds or it, it investigated the temperature at, of the room for the viability of those seeds. And so that was 20 degrees Celsius. Then next we exposed, um, we exposed the cones to six other increasing levels of heat for 150 seconds in a muffle furnace. And that included 100 degrees Celsius, 150, 200, 300, 400, and 600 degrees Celsius. After they were exposed to heat for 150, se 150 seconds, we immediately removed them from the muffle furnace and exposed them to viability testing. So we again randomly selected 25 seeds for viability testing after each treat after each heat treatment. Um, and for larger cones, we only used five to 10 cones per um, heat exposure treatment just because there was way more seeds in each of those cones. Whereas incense cedar only had a maximum of four seeds per cone. So we had to use about 10 to 15 cones to test that for um, incense cedar. And to take a look at the results for seed mortality, I again pulled all of the species together to take a look at the general trend. Um, and that was just because, you know, we weren't able to find a significant species effect, likely due to the small sample size once again. So um, here we can see that there's a negative relationship, a significant negative relationship between increasing levels of heat and viability of seeds. And that came in with a p-value of 0 0.0156. We're um, able to see that uh, we can we can maintain 10% survivorship. So 10% of seeds were viable within the cone when exposed to a maximum temperature of 342 degrees Celsius. And once again, although there was not a significant species effect, I did still want to tease those apart and take a look at the species specific differences. Um, so here we can see that lodgepole ha um, holds that upper threshold of heat exposure that it can um, sustain and still provide viable seeds. They, for a 10% sur seed survivorship, they were able to be exposed to 342 degrees Celsius. Um, and for 50% seed survivorship, they were able to um, withstand 235 degrees Celsius. Douglas fir was kind of on that lower end. Um, for 10% survival, they could be exposed to a maximum of, of 171 degrees Celsius. And then for 50% seed survivorship, they could be exposed to 64 degrees Celsius. Now to then, um, take a look at the temporal window for facultative serotony. I made a figure of the fire distribution in the Klamath, Sierra Nevadas, as well as the Cascades from 1915 to 2017. Um, and from this figure, we're able to see that the peak timing of fire is from June to August. I then overlaid the window of seed maturation from those results on top of that. And that's from late July to late September. And that's indicated with the um, like pinkish red color. From there, I calculated the area, the average area that was included within this window. And I found 37% um, of the average area was actually burned within this window. So 37% of that average area burned was compatible or had the ability to host facultative serotony for non serotonous species. And to conclude, um, just to take a look at the results from seed maturation, we know that 50% of all species seeds are mature around 1800 degrees Celsius. Um, and this is late August or 240 Julian days. As for seed mortality, we saw 50% mortality recorded at 200 degrees Celsius across all species. Once again, the peak timing of fires from June to August. And then the window of facultative serotony is from late July to late September. 
So with all of that in mind, I would just like to thank you guys for listening to my talk. And I would also like to thank my Wildland Fire Lab assistants for all of their help. Um, everybody did amazing. And I really, really, really appreciate that and how that took me for my research.